Hi drummers, hope you're well. So Mike Barnes here with the tremendous, sensational George Double Hello, uh, from Trinity Drums. <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk about, amongst many other things, uh, his superb new series of books. Well, the third part is new, introducing Drum Kit. As you know, I've offered on about these on the channel before, Dynamite, series of books, anybody serious about developing their drumming skill. And we're gonna talk about a few things uh, from these books and then extend a little into the Trinity Rock and Pop grades, um, which has always been a great deal of interest on, on this channel. Um, so we're gonna talk about that and a few sort of common questions that come up to do with that and stuff to do with these books. So uh, welcome, George. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be, you know, here where all the magic happens in yeah. HQ. Some of the magic the sort happens. sort of secret bunker, you know. <laughs> the bunker you know, of fun. Top secret location. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. It's lovely to see it from the inside, oh, you thanks know. Thanks for coming, man. I Not at all. It. I appreciate it. Yeah, so, uh, well, let's talk about these first. So this is a new book to come out. Now, I know loads of you guys are into part one and part two. These are introducing drum kit. And what they do is they take you right from the beginning of playing the drums, basically. There's a lovely description right at the start about you're holding a tennis ball. And you, like the yeah. first thing, you throw it down. I've been saying that. I've nicked that from you. I've been saying that. Oh, I hope about, so. Sorry. I pinched that. it as well. I, did, you, I was going to say, who did you nick it from? It's good. So that idea, you say a, gym, a gymnasium floor, don't you? Is that right? You're holding it's a like tennis a, it's, ball. Well, it's a hard floor. Yeah. And it just, uh, hopefully, it just evokes that idea that there's a sense of movement upwards and yeah. then a throwing motion downwards. Love it. But you're ready to sort of take the ball on, you know, yeah. as it's coming up to you. A love bit it. like, you know, Emma Raducanu or whatever, taking yeah, the right. ball on the yeah. way up again, you know. I love it. Down it goes and up the habit. This this game is all about feel, I think. That's the thing. And you do summed it up. If you've got some nice, I always feel like if you've got some nice imagery that that gets you the right feel going, and that's well. If that's you think it's about, you start. know, it's about using all of the parts that, that, that are involved in, in creating a sound. Lovely. Uh, you know, the drum, obviously, the yep. stick, but yourself too. Yeah. And you think about, you know, if you had a, a basketball, for example, yeah, you know, nice. you, and a really sort of pumped up basketball yep. that is, that's sort of, you know, under tension from all the yep. air inside. Yeah. You know, and if you want to, if you want to sort of rebound that and use all yep. the potential energy it has, you don't sort of get down one, how many times have I said this? This is exactly right. And yeah, bring yeah. it up again. That's so true. You let yeah. it work for you. And then down it goes and up it comes. And yeah. what you are then doing is you're yeah. harnessing the energy and you're making everything work in your favour. I love it. Yeah. Then it's all positivity and sort of creating, you know, sort of curating that energy going on. Yeah, that's great. I mean, how many times have, and no disrespect to anybody, but sometimes us dudes come in here for lessons and they've been uh -huh. having been playing drums like longer than I have, do you know what I mean? Like people do come in and play drums 40 years. And sometimes people say, oh, I can't go fast. I don't know what it is, I can't play fast. And I think, okay, well, let's, let's have a look and they go, right. That's right, and then, reduce but, it. And then, including me when I was 15 years old. Of course, all of us. Including me now. <laughs> like, and it's that thing of like trying so hard, you're dead right. Like that imagery is exactly right. Like if you had a basketball, like if, you, if the object of the game is how many times can we bounce this thing in a minute? Like, would it be better to do this or would it be better to do this? And so that's, anyway, the point is, in these books, right at the start, that's what the first thing I remember about picking up the part one, back in the days when it was a red cover, yeah, was yeah. that imagery of the basketball. I thought, I'm, I'm on board with these, I like these books. And uh, yeah, from there, part one, part two, of course, takes you through all the, all the things you need to know in terms of reading, in terms of note values, counting. People always ask me, what, like, when drummers go one, E, and, they say, what, what's that about? What are, they, what are they on about? What are they saying? The answers are in this, this series of books, man. And um, yeah, part three, like I say, is new. Do you want to tell us a bit about part three and where it fits in? Certainly. Well, I mean, part, uh, part three is the latest and, you know, probably the last one in the series. Right. Um, but if, bringing it from part one, I, I just found, I thought at the time when we published it mm -hmm. in 2010, 2011, right. there was a gap in the market. There were mm -hmm. lots of, and there still are, lots of fantastic drum books sure. that tell you all sorts of things, mm -hmm. but there were very few that brought you along very gradually. Nice. And gave I you like the it. information you needed at the beginning yep. to do simple things I like well it. with with a with a full understanding. Yeah, nice. And so the idea of but one is that it takes you from your, you know, that's a drum kit. This is a stick. Yeah, right. That's your drum teacher. And just yeah. really that, that thing, this is how you hit a drum, like really basic things. How you hold a stick, things. how yeah. you put a stick down. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is a crotchet. These are the drums. Yeah. How we work around, you know. These are the these are simple note values, but then immediately trying to use them in a creative way within a real context, playing along with, you know, with, with backing tracks that yes. are, that are the, yeah. uh, uh, an appropriate tempo. Nice. And, you know, in a range of styles that you'll encounter, yeah. you know, and making these things real. Lots of, you know, kind of real world skills 
immediately, but at an appropriate level for, for, the, for the very beginner. I love it. And they hopefully uh, do work alongside the, uh, both Trinity syllabuses, yep. the Rock and Bob and the Trinity Big time. Uh, drum kit, so that anything you need to know from the very beginning up to grade four now nice. with, with book three. Got it, yeah. If there's any aspect of, you know, if there's any sort of theoretical, stylistic, notational, musical mm -hmm. uh, detail that yep. you're unsure of, the answer will be somewhere within these books. I love it. And hopefully will have been explained to you in an evocative way with practical demonstration. Nice. And you will be brought on yep. to, you know, to think, ah, actually, now I can, I can master that if it's an idea of independence or anything like that, you know, you will have had time on that topic yeah. so that you can then approach the graded material yeah. you know with, with know. much of the work being having been done Love it. and yeah. then you can get on with making music yes. and, and finding your own voice with these things very rather nice. than struggling with the, the, you know the very rudiments of it if yeah, you right something that i'm always waffling on about you'll know if you watch this channel is my little idea of the improvement zone we've been talking about this already yeah. a bit today and this is just something that's just so close to my heart honestly just from doing lessons with lots of people thousands of people obviously over lots of years now and just obviously my own learning as well and that's the principle that you well, like you said you start at the beginning this is a drum kit this is the feeling of hitting a drum and you start with very basic things and then you're always working in that beautiful zone where okay I've understood the first part of this and I think the, the worst part of learning something new is that is that confusion and I think what happens is people often go beyond this zone and that, for me I might be so bold this is what these books Please. do really brilliantly is they keep you in that zone so right from that beginning of this is a drum kit these are the parts this is how you hit a drum you move on you, you learn what a crotchet is you learn what quavers are you learn what when drummers go one eat and uh what are they what is that what are they on about and I've met people who've played the drums for years and they asked me that very question mm -hmm. someone asked me that in a pub the day when a drummer goes one e and what what are they talking about they had no idea they had lessons they'd done loads of playing for years and years and that that's what these books do is they take you from that very first level of understanding you get that under your belt and then you say okay I'm going to move on to the next level with yeah standing it looks like you were saying really standing on the shoulders of those skills well of the, of the knowledge that you have acquired yeah. and then from that point you go forward yeah you know and actually you know, this isn't, as we've discussed, this yeah. isn't all about reading. It's not just no, about not reading. It, yeah. um, it will equip you with these reading skills, but essentially, you know, semi-quavers, quavers, note values, d subdivision, all yeah. of these things exist. Yeah. And our ability to understand that doesn't just make us better readers, it makes us better players. And, make, and how we will fluently that, yeah. move yeah. around the kit um, yeah. will be, uh, you know, very much akin to our actual understanding of what music is. It doesn't necessarily yeah, matter for reading it or not reading it, yeah. but we need to understand and get inside it. Yeah, I love it. Something I've just heard again and again from people, again, no disrespect to anybody, I can understand where this comes from. People often put forward the idea that reading music and like understanding music theory and then quote unquote playing by ear are like opposites in Absolutely. some way or are a choice that somebody makes. And I just couldn't disagree with that more. Well, people just... often used to say, oh, he's a reading drummer, or yeah. he's a non-reading drummer. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. About, what about, he's just a drummer? He's just a drummer, it's just, it's just You know, and the no. idea is, you know, if of course you are able to read something, yeah. it doesn't mean that you don't play by ear. It doesn't mean yeah. that you leave your ears at home and that you're not listening. <laughs> exactly and right. you're, and you're, you know, because in thing. order to express yourself, you've got to understand the time, you've got to hear, yeah. the, you've got to hear the times, yeah. and you've got to, you know, work yeah. with, all of your senses yeah. and those musicians around you or the backing track or whatever you're working with. Yeah. And it's all an auditory skill, yeah. you know? So your ears are always your best friend. I totally this is just agree. another level of understanding. Yeah. And also it, it has the bonus of being able, of equipping you with the skills that you can say yes to more offers. So you can say yes to more offers. You can learn, I always think for me, like you can learn music, like orders of magnitude faster. So my classic gigging experience, if someone phones up and says, let's gig tomorrow, Here's 50 songs. You're like, oh man! So you go on Spotify, and what? Like, if you didn't, if you didn't have the knowledge that these sort of books, you've got to memorize it. All. What have you got? To, what do you do? How does that even? <laughs> I like, can't. I can't like, do that. Please comment how that works. If you don't, because what would you do? You have to put the music on and you have to play along. Is that how it works? Just, well, if you can make, because like cheat sheets, right? You can so, write your cheat sheets out. But what's a cheat sheet other than? You know, a visual prompt yeah. for what you've got to play. Exactly and what's right. a visual prompt for what you've got to play if it's not a piece of music? Exactly. You know, it's all just, it's just, it's a way of, you know, the printed or the written article is just another way of communicating yeah. music, how we make music. I love it. You know? I love it. And I think you're exactly right. That idea, you don't have to choose between your eyes and your ears. You can absolutely use both. That's right. It's solid gold. And, you know, even when you are, I've, my experience is even when I am playing by ear, so to speak, like, again, yeah, this isn't necessarily the case for everybody. For me, I'm, 
I see the stuff because I've learned, you know, to read music. I actually see the things Indeed. in my head. So oh, that, that's a whole load of semiquavers, or I can hear there the drummer's playing. I don't know, 16th notes, it'll be hand-to-hand -hand on the hi-hat. But that's in our head when we're seconds. playing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. when you're playing, if, if you're playing whatever gig, if you're playing a yeah. wedding gig, or if you're playing yeah. whatever it is, whatever in whatever is. musical situation you find yourself, yeah. you know, there's still that link that's there yeah. that allows you to sort of put a stick down and think, I understand what I'm playing here. Yeah. Whatever this Big fill time. is, whatever this division of the pulse is all yeah. the time, you know, I'm using, I understand what these notes are. Yeah, and it gives you, I think, confidence as well. My experience of learning it was, of learning you know music theory for drums so to speak like you find in these books is it gave me confidence like i could say yes to stuff and feel like i'd be in a position to even if i couldn't like work something out immediately i'd, I'd have the skills in place to to figure stuff out yeah you, it empowers you to actually be able to learn the music and engage with the music that you're gonna well what we try to do certainly in this book is you know we try to make it very much about the music so there's nice. lots and lots of play along yeah well part three has been play along fantastic I'm doing these yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot yeah. of music in there yeah. because of course otherwise the thing that can happen is we think oh god i'm overloaded with all this information sure. how do i retain that information yes. actually what is a semi and what happens it, when we context, play, do a dot on a note isn't it? and yeah. there's a tie here and yeah. how do i keep all that going so you know only actually by making music do these concepts and these ideas totally. dead in. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there has to be some practical application for yeah, it. Yeah. You know, and there's just, so there's a reason to learn it all the time. And in this book, hopefully, there's a bit more context. There's a little bit more. It's not a magazine, but there's maybe You're right, some it's, it's ideas about where ideas come from. Yeah. You know, stars come from. So we talk a bit about Boogaloo and where that nice, starts, yeah. of course, because nice. you know where everyone who sits at the kit, where well, we all there, you know, boom. Boom. But we all yeah. want to be able to play that. There's nobody. You play that groove, everybody under the sun Everyone's goes, had a go oh, I love you that. Know, that's I love right. That. Yeah. You know, but then where does it come from? So we've got a little bit of context for that. And of course, nice. that you know, the, the origins of that groove, um, you, you know, have now been moved on from. So that groove infects almost every style of music. Yeah. It is, you know. yeah. So anyway, there's, there's ideas about that, not just about that style, but about other little styles, you know. Yeah, Latin, time. bossa nova, shuffle. You've got you know. bossa in there, you've got swing, you've got, yeah, the shuffle on the bluesy shuffle. I'll do a video about that too. I really enjoyed that. Oh, good. The bluesy shuffle. One <laughs> yeah, right, we're going to do it. It's fun. You've got the ghost note thing. You've Indeed. You've got, uh, yeah, I mean, like you say, the massive range of stuff. Well, anything that actually that you, can that you can encounter in any of those syllabuses up to that level, mm -hmm. we'll have, um, you, you know, a practical place nice. through, through this series of books mm -hmm. that hopefully is enjoyable, that's the point about it, yeah. well, that they'll be fun to play, yeah. you know, and they're little things that will, you know, a, a lesson's worth of material, here's a piece, yeah. you know, it, it, it's not necessarily one, you, it's not one you play in an exam, but you can enjoy playing it, and then along the way, yeah. those concepts get bedded in. I love it. Mark. Obviously, you probably got the hang of it. When I can't recommend them enough. I think they're brilliant. Well, I've sweet. been using them. No, I appreciate it, man. They're really, really great, and they make the job of being a drum teacher easier as well because well, uh, well, they give explanations for the stuff. So you know, you're doing your. I mean, so many people doing rock and pop grades, which are great, and you get to you know whatever grade two. And you think oh, I can't really. I can't. People say the drum fills in uh, she sells sanctuary. You know, by the cup. yeah. But 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 people go. I can't can't feel they're that. They're always the bit, it. aren't they? Always yeah. the tricky bits. Those dig a dip, dig a boom. It's those that, bits, that, you know. Or. Um, yeah, we'll talk about some of these hopefully in a, in a no, second. No, I'd love to, you know. Moments like, or, or uh, you know, don't want to fight, um, grade three, you've got that funky, everyone knows the bit, the two little bass drums. People oh, say, yeah. oh, I'm struggling with those yeah. two quick it's tricky, it's you've a challenge. A, you've got a whole thing about that. Um, yeah, going up grade four, we'll talk about this as well, uh, brown eyed girl, everybody. This is the most asked question, in my experience, across the whole of the rock and pop syllabus is, I'm some version of I'm struggling Would to you play like to fast talk, enough. Should we talk a bit about yeah, that? Let's talk, yeah, yeah, we can talk about the syllabus as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, for the so uh, for Brown Eyed Girl, everybody says oh, I'm, tr I'm struggling to play fast enough on the hi hat. I know I've got to be because it says is it bright and light? Is that the phrase? Bright and light yeah. is the one that we use. Um, that's on Beatles. That's the, the here yeah. comes the here sun comes one. The sun. That's what yeah, we okay. use there because of course, you know, if you listen to the original, if you hear Ringo playing. I think he plays great on that. You know, I think Ringo's yeah, a great. he's delightful, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's not heavy, basically. No. The whole idea of the song, the George Harrison tune, you know. Yeah, of course. It's not yeah. It's not a full-on yes. rock tune. And I've got a student who said when he plays it, it sounds like death metal, because he's going... He's, like, he's tight, he's tense. So That's right. We, we don't, And there's something in the 60s, you know, that, uh, where that slight, slightly lighter hi-hat, yeah. you know, sort of uh, occupies you know, part of the body of work from that, that Big time. period. Big time, yeah. You know, and yeah. people play differently there, you know, yeah. and there's, there's very much room for that sort of light. It doesn't yeah. mean that, you know, it's, it's the only way to do it, because of course it isn't. I mean, you know, we have to sort of take the appropriate approach yeah. to any particular yeah. piece. And so, it's really nice to be authentic, isn't it, if you're playing a piece. And the thing with music is, it matters to people. People grow up hearing this music, they 
fall in love, they get married. Mm. This mu the music like that is well, it's, it's the life. soundtrack to your life, isn't it? It is, you know? and then when you play it for them, you play a gig or whatever, you play it for them. If you can make it feel like that thing that they love, yeah, then that's really powerful. I think that's it's... part of the job of being a musician, of perhaps being an entertainer of that sort. Is you, you know, even if you just yeah, like a, myself playing a wedding or playing a, some sleazy corporate deal, like whatever, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That, what that, that's, are you doing? That's, that's the thing. Well, and then that, making it feel like it felt yeah. is, is massive. So, well, that's the idea. Um, but that, that hi-hat thing, I'm really glad you picked yeah, that up, actually. Yeah. Because um, it's tricky, isn't it? You know, and so if we want to play faster hi-hat, yes. you know, there are different approaches, aren't there? There are. There's May a, I just... Yeah, go nuts, man. Yeah, please do, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Much. I don't know if I'll go nuts, but... Uh, <laughs> You'll be <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, but cool. if you... I saw, a, I went on a, a, a little, I'm not necessarily going to advertise it, but I went on this, um, uh, there was an online session with the great, oh, yeah, my head's off here, yeah, with I James did. Gadsden, I don't know of if you... Of course, James Gadsden, oh, yeah. yeah. I did um, a video the other day of um, Use Me, right? That's yeah, right, so Use group, Me, you know. Beautiful group, oh, man. That's the one. And, and he's playing... Something like that, but it's the idea of... Oh, tasty. Can I just yeah. hit that? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's that idea that we're getting... We're down right. and up, you know, it's the multiple motion thing, that kind of mower, mower the thing. Like a whipping type of emotion. That's right, yeah. you know, we're yeah. down, but we get, a stick, we get a stroke on the way up. Yeah. That's the point. And that yeah. allows, so we get that kind of two for one thing. Okay. You know, yeah. which, which allows us to sort of play faster. But the difference, I think, for brown eyed girls, yes. it's not really heavy like that. Yes, this is the thing, isn't it? Because sometimes, a technique of that nature would be referred to as uh, like a shaft tip. Yeah, so that, that isn't the vibe here, though, is it? Like you don't. I want, don't think so, and I don't think that's the vibe on the original record. No, no definitely not. No. So the, the idea is that I, I think when when um, I played it on the Trinity, yes, on the demo stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of using fulcrum. I'm just right. using the rebound there, so we, but I'm relaxed. So you'll get to this bit of a whipping motion in your arm. There's definitely that. There's definitely motion. So I'm here, I'm creating the energy from coming up, and then there's the throwdown. Okay. And then it's the idea that we re, 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 that's the natural rebound. I, and so I will just I, I will keep using that. So I'm I'm coming down from that high pass. So I'm not. There's not. But there's nothing that's tense. Got it. And would you say that on the second stroke you're using your f actively like or in, with intention using your fingers to. I am supporting, with, yeah. if you imagine one, two, I am supporting with three, four, okay. five, but yeah. it's not that idea. No, okay, it's not, a, you're not playing this as a straight thing. I'm not playing the whole thing, as yeah. we would play certain things. Like, I'm not like using those. Yeah, I'm not okay. supporting with those okay. necessarily. All right, good. Because, actually, um, the dynamic is not heavy either. Yeah, right. You know, it's a, it's a real kind of MF. Uh, is it, uh, uh, I've said this now, is it marked MF? It's yeah, anyway. well, the point is, it's... It's, it's, not, that, super it's, it's, it's not super loud, anyway, you know. It, it's that vibe, isn't it, of it's... Like actually, one of the other pieces says this in the notes, doesn't it? Is it the freak? Like one of the challenges drive at that lower Indeed. dynamic. That's Indeed. the thing that you're going for. So yeah, that whip thing I think is is great because you just got that sense of pulse, that sense of momentum, like forward movement. But like you say, you're not. It's a, it's a balance. You're not laying into it. I think the, the idea. There. I think any you know anyone, and the other thing you know on some of the on the rock tracks, of course, we're playing rim shot. Yep. On Brown Eyed Girl, I'm not playing. Definitely well, not, yeah. certainly on yeah. the demo, I'm not playing rim shot no, there. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a light, nor on Here Comes the Sun. It's just yeah. a, it's, it's a slight, sort of lighter head only sound. Yeah. You know, that sort of skip. It skips along. I think yeah. is the way of saying it. So yeah, there's, there's a yeah. sense of propulsive motion that's going forward, and we're yeah. taking the band with us. Yeah. But we are not absolutely clobbering people no. around the head with it. It's all. No. You no. know, so it's groovy, but it's you know, it's it, it's a it's a slightly lighter approach if you like. I love it. So in that way, stay relaxed. Use the use the rebound that you create. Yep. Okay. Don't be tight. Don't try to make all the movements yourself. Don't uh, don't certainly don't bring the stick up back up yes, again. Go back to the basketball. Allow yep. the stick to come back up. Yeah. Use the full crumb. Yeah. Yeah. Use the full crumb and then rebound that way, and you will yep. find yourself not having to work against yourself. Like if it. you like. Yeah. You know you'll liberate the stick to make its natural movement, and then you'll make the most of it uh, of every bit of energy and every react every physical yes. reaction of the. The, of old, the stick and the hi hat. The old cliche: let the stick do the work. I think yeah, so. I think yeah, the stick yeah. has to do the work yeah, this yeah. way. Otherwise, yeah. you know, and certainly avoid anything. Make sure that you know that idea of the sort of hook of the finger and the tip of the thumb like that, so the stick yeah. is able to move very freely. Can we talk about that real quick? Because I, I get well, that so much. So my normal explanation of that would be the, the top crease yeah. in your finger. Little line there. Little Come line, on. and the fleshy part of your 
thumb. You know Thomas Prigden? You seen Thomas Prigden? No, I haven't. From the, the guy who's in the uh, Mars Volta with him for several of the days. Oh, right, great. He talks about, and this gets into finger control. I get that we're not 100% thinking of that. Uh -huh. But he gets into this idea of, like, he gets people, when he's, and they start playing, like, rolling the fulcrum, right? Yeah, lovely. So, so pushing your um, thumb forward and your index finger back a little bit. And obviously you can take off from there into finger control and all the rest of it. But that's huge, I think. And what the thing I just see, and again, often not exclusively, and but not, but often it's from people maybe playing a lot of heavy rock and things for years, is you see this, you see this, like, the stick resting in the, the knuckle here. Uh huh, the second that. joint. Yeah, and then people say, I don't know what it is, I'm just get, not getting any rebound. Like the stick's kind of, I think that's where a lot of that comes mm. from. But well, if you tighten it somewhere, stairs. then you, it, it's, it's, it's entirely like you're going to be yeah. tight somewhere else as well. I just think this is massive for me. So keeping the stick here, and I can relate to being younger and playing in rock bands and stuff and just keep totally getting into here. Of course, I understand. I remember playing at the, the Cambridge Band competition years ago and playing a number that was fast and having a not very nice experience where I really tensed up yeah. and I went from feeling good to like to really fighting it and it wasn't really, and it was, it was absolutely in there. So I think for me, I, hopefully you agree that the fulcrum, that, that thing of resting on the top crease there is, for me, that's huge. Um, keeping that yeah, in place, indeed. you know what I'm saying? Um, I generally get people to sort of point at something, do you? turn their hand over, so you're kind of revealing this part of the, uh, you're revealing this part of the finger, take the stick, and maybe a third of the way from the butt, you okay. sort of put, roll it onto there, put your, put your thumb on top. Okay, good. Remove the left hand, yep. open the fingers, yep. bring it in like that, and then we're onto that idea of the throwdown. Yeah. And then you kind of have the grip like that, and then the match grip, of course, has the same thing the other way, and then we're at this position. At rest, the, you know, the, the, the tips of the six will, will form a triangle, and you just bring up, and then we're in the, very naturally, Nice. And then we're in that, well, that's a sort of Jim Chopin thing, you know, and you're yeah, in the, yeah, um, yeah. you're Maybe. in that natural playing position. Yeah. But I think, you, you know, Brown Girl is tricky, it's fast, but do let the stick do the work, do let yeah. the rebound do the work. Don't feel you have to micromanage every movement yourself. Don't nice. feel you have to bring the stick up. Yeah. It will work for you. The more you can relax and allow the stick to work. Yeah. And, you know, these sticks are, are made of a particular material for a reason because they're bouncy, you know, the, 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 the hi-hat, the cymbals want to ping the stick back, as do, you know, the, the, those, the, the tight drum heads. Yeah. They, want to, they want to throw the stick back at you, the stick wants to leap, leap back. Yeah. Only by being relaxed can we allow those things to happen. This is great stuff. You know? I love it. That's so really, that, really cool. So, and, and, and would you, because the thing I get a lot of people learning that song particularly, or any faster song, is they just, they get it and all that makes sense, but then they put the, backing track on yeah. and it just it's just too fast. So they'll play a few bars and then that doesn't really hold up. Would you would you recommend like some kind of slow getting faster? Absolutely. Like well one, one thing I would I would do uh, is I would I would you know I if I'm showing someone brown eyed girl, yeah. I won't start by saying no, you let's play you brown eyed girl. Right, I, so, I would yeah. actually go to a different tune. Yeah, nice. Um, so one yeah, I quite right. like to use actually um, is clocks. By Coldplay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not right up there. Yeah. But it's sort of uh, it, it's it, it, there's some quite nice technical interest because you're, you're having to do that bag and bag and yeah. bag and bag. Yeah. Yeah. But it's you know it's constant quaver. Yeah. Still at the same time, not quite as fast. Yeah. So I get. That's I get someone, Lang, wasn't it constant quaver? <laughs> Something else. Yeah. Good, 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 good Thank you. Um, Gotta get a dad joke yes. somewhere. No, well, yeah. I forgot what you did. Same thing, <laughs> Um Anyway. Sorry. Could be, but it could be anything. I yeah, just, no, I like that. I, I, yeah, I just, clocks, yeah. You know, right. that's yeah. one thing to use. Yeah. You know, but anything that sort of is, is approaching uh, that tempo. Yeah. You know, everything nice. sort of slightly up. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And then if we, then we're sort of, you know, without knowing it, we're, we're, we're building up our facility. You're building up. I as do... opposed to trying to go, sorry, as opposed that's to going, to... Strike, going straight at it. Yeah. And then continually, continually failing. Yes, which is you know, potentially disheartening. Creep up. Yeah. Creep up on it. And also, it's quite nice between grades or something, to just to have a bit of a break. Just nice. to play some other things, don't Love you it. think? Massive, just to play, just to play for massive. fun. I mean, I didn't have lessons, you know. Yeah. When I got my first kit, we were just in the garage, and I, there was a yeah. little, <laughs> there was a little album called American Heartbeat, which I had on okay. the tape, which was just a, uh, it was a, it was a compilation, you know, I can't remember what label it was on, but there were a few Toto tunes on, R.O. Nice. Speedwagon, things nice. like that, you know, nice. Kansas. Yeah. And I just, I just learned the tape off by heart, you yeah. know. Um, and as you, you know, then these things start to emerge. Our love facility it. gets better. I love it. You know, I'm... and that's but that, that's what everyone calls playing by ear, and it is. It's very much that, but it's it's, it's about enjoyment, you know. I love it. I'm into running. I like 
uh, not not a fast runner, but I just like to, it's my sort of form of meditation, I just disappear off and go running. Uh -huh. And runners always talk about time on your feet. And I just think this really relates to doing something like that on the high. Of course it is. Time on your feet. So my thing is like, obviously it's football at the minute, I'll often, am I might just a bit weird, but I'll sit and I'll put music on in like one headphone, right? And I'll just play this, like this, like both, I do like classic, like a Jim Chapin sort of right stick, mm -hmm. then I do left stick, and then I do both sticks. Along to, I just put on like the Radio 1 playlist or the Radio 2 playlist or whatever. I've got a whole Spotify playlist that re recommended uh, listening for drummers that I just put together one day. Like it's that, that time on your feet thing seems... I think it's great. Because like, these explanations that you get from your drum teacher, my experience of that was that was great, but in, like information and skill are not the same thing. Right? You are, you're, you're like, is it Don Familari? He's got that amazing concept, it's your move. So you go to your teacher, you get the information, you get, you know, which is obviously important to get that bit right and you need to make sure you've sort of understood that then it's your move like your job is then to turn that information into skill and i think sometimes i don't get into a whole conversation about like no but it's interesting know. and i think any actually anybody you know anybody who's watching this video now yep. has already made a positive move towards <laughs> that right because yeah. this is spending some time thinking about drums when you're yep. not in a drum lesson nice essentially yeah. essentially I like you know, it. Yeah. whatever it is, you know, you're you're curious about how it, how it goes, you know, yeah. because otherwise, what happens is, you know, you sit, and especially if you're learning, you know, a syllabus doesn't have to be a Trinity syllabus, but you know, sure. a, a graded material or, or or working with these charts and the dots and everything, yeah. you know, you're looking at the dots, thinking, how does that go, you know, and rather than actually creating and making music, you know, and having often... an obstacle towards it. Yeah. So, if you are able to just play. You know, I just think that's basically like time. Like, there's no way around the the hours. You've got to put the hours in. <laughs> yeah, I think your often... your experience cannot just be uh, the time spent within a drum lesson. Yeah, exactly right. Just that time spent, just ingraining it, like turning it into something that is just is just part of you. So there you go. So if you're use. working with tunes, yep. you know whatever they mean, but you know that out out of the syllabus, you know, uh, and, and that doesn't mean you shouldn't be reading them. But I mean, you know, but. But just but that's huge, stuff, isn't it? Like just not off. just performing the song. Like the, the song is kind of like the, the the last step in a lovely, hopefully enjoyable journey. Process and, of right, the journey. And, then, and, is, and, is and when you come out the other, journey, well, when you come yeah. out the other yeah. side of these things, you know, you've, you've, you've there will be there's technical concepts, yeah. you know, uh, musical ideas, yeah. the, theoretical confidence, yeah. stylistic variety. Nice. Yeah. You know, hopefully these things will show you how to play in different styles. You know, you've, yeah. we've got, you know, we've we've, we've got. You know, if you go up to sort of grade seven, you've got Iron Maiden, you've got yeah, right. System of a Down. You know, yeah. these are full on. But then you've got that little Ray Charles thing, you know, as well, Ooh, which is that really fast yeah. rumble, which and that's going to, this is where these come in. Yeah, a big time. I think grade seven is like the, the grade of finger control, isn't it? Absolutely got, right. Uh, is it rope? And on rope. rope Man, yeah. Taylor Hawkins. Isn't, so, that, isn't so that monstrous? I've got a confession to make is that I made a video demo of rope okay. and I did a load of them in a day. Like and I didn't spot that it was three in a row. So yeah. I say this to everybody, or like my students. I so that like, that's the, I, as far as I know. I've t obviously tried my best to play on all the videos. I've done tried to play accurately on that one. I didn't, and I didn't spot it was that till afterwards. Yeah. And by the time I sort of posted, a lot of people watched it at that point. So oh. I, I wrote a disclaimer on the saying, By the way, I've I've got I didn't I didn't play this right. But yeah, that that great. Yeah, you've got that, and you've got the Ray Charles thing, and there's another one as well, isn't there? Well, you got the Grizzly Bear one. Grizzly Bear, right. You know, so, and, and it's all one guy. Did you know that? Grizzly Bear, I don't know what his name is. It's all I mean, one guy. Well, he's it? playing, yeah. I don't know if he plays absolutely everything, but he plays drums on it and he's singing and he's playing a lot of it. And he's a great player. It's a, it's a great, it's a very really different. It's nice, yeah. Anyone who's interested in that. There was some, when we put the syllabus together, yeah. there, were, there were a few of us um, selecting tunes. Yeah, nice. Uh, I was in the room and there was a, there's a fantastic um, drum teacher yeah. uh, down in, in Tunbridge Wells called James Sedge. James, if you're watching, okay. thumbs yeah. up for all the things here. Um, who was uh, a consultant um, for cool. the syllabus. Yeah. And we, we had our sort of suggestions actually, which were very similar. Yeah. Um, and there were a couple of other people in the room as well, yeah. uh, a bit younger than us. Um, who had some younger <laughs> suggestions? Who had some slightly more youthful cool. suggestions? And this, a, a and this was one because yeah. we didn't know it. You know, I didn't know it. James didn't know it. Yeah. Uh, but this, hey, this is great. You know, it's a really interesting kit part. Yeah. You know, lots of sort of rudimental style sticking yeah, patterns. There's a bit at the end, isn't there, where it goes to the bell, yeah. and you've got to maintain that pattern. All of that, and there's sort of left hand doubles on the on the snare. It's yeah. extremely, you know. So yeah. I recommend that to you just for a bit of fun. You know, you don't have to take the exam, but it's you know, it's yeah. a Big it's time. a real study in. 
you know, in technique and sound, and, and certainly in you know, a sound control at the kit, dynamic control at the kit. Massively, you know, yeah. Those ghost notes that we have, and you know. Yeah, it's all that business. It's like, right, I mean, I think it says in the you know notes at the start you can stick it in various ways, but I did it as a right, left, left. Yeah. Like a little bounce triplet, so to speak, that kind of right, left, left. Yeah. Bouncing that was absolutely solid gold. Well, I think that's you know all the things we're putting here, you know, in that idea about the brown and gold. These are just the, these are just one way through, you know. Nice. I think that's really. You, know, you have to find your own way through. These are ways that work for. You've got things that work for you similarly. Yeah, I yeah, have, yeah, you know, yeah. and you know, if, if we're getting the right sound out of the uh, of the kit, yeah. you know, if we're holding time down, if we're yeah. playing st with, yeah. with, a, with with a degree of stylistic authenticity, nice, yeah. you know, and we're performing and enjoying it, you know, yeah. then I think that sort of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Big you know, time. Yeah, that's a it's a sort of musically successful outcome, you know, and everyone plays slightly differently, you know. You, that, I, I mean, I did a, a little video thing with Jeff Hamilton. I don't know if you guys yeah, know Jeff Hamilton. Stuff. Yeah, you know, oh, and again, you know, that especially He's one of my with the heroes. Well, me yeah. too, yeah. and especially with the brushes yeah. thing, you know, yeah, it was like, look, yeah. you know. Yeah. They're really because brushes. You know, how many of you are playing brushes all the time? It's a dark yeah. art brushes. It is a dark. You know, you know what? It, I don't have any. I've made any brush videos. Um, there you go. So you know, it's something probably because I'm just. Phone no, Jeff Hamilton. I've known Jeff Hamilton. That's well, that, isn't it? Yeah, that's, <laughs> but I mean, you know, he will say, you know, there's there, there's no one way of doing it. Right. There's so many different techniques. Yeah, man. You know. Yeah. Uh, and, and his technique, Philly Joe Jones technique. Yeah, lovely. You know, Ed Thigpen's technique. Oh, all, they're all different. The they're all book very I've ever, I've ever done, gone through is the that's sound right. brushes. Yeah. You know, yeah. but the, all all of their techniques are very different. Yeah. You know, and their other nice. teachers that he's had and sort of shown him things and and. Uh, you know, John Riley, another great jazz. Yeah, you know, the, 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 oh, man, the, all yeah. of these people that yeah. have used the brushes slightly differently. Yeah. And um, you know, brushes and sticks—they're just beaters that we hit the drums with. Yeah. You know, so again, there are there is going to be variety. People will play differently. You I know? Love it. And as long yeah. as we get from one end to the other, yeah. we're making. You know, otherwise we'd all sound the same. And I, I, I think there is room for all of that variety in finding nice. their own way through it. You know. I love it. I always think something I always seem to end up waffling on about on this channel is like it, I always think if you're sitting there. And you looking out, and people are nodding. If people are dancing, it was something they're allowed to. Under, you know, that's right. Is the Go is ahead. the foot tapping? Is the foot tapping? You've won. That's the, that's this whole game. Like if you look out, and people are doing that phase. Doesn't matter it, what chops you got at it, all. It really doesn't. Are we grooving? Which is just as are we well grooving or are we not? Yeah, yeah, like does it groove or does it not? That's it. That's the whole. That's, that's the, the beginning whole game, and end. Yeah. It is. Oh, that's good. On the on the subject of yes, like, people with a different perspective, this is good because I've obviously I've done quite a lot of talk throughs of songs and stuff, but I totally agree that the different perspective some people bring to techniques stuff, that hi hat thing was super useful. Can we talk about a couple of other? Yes, because we, we were just about thinking things. about our, you know our bass drum techniques. Like yes, yes, it, it is. Know? Yeah, perfect. I think this is great, and I just think that I mean, why wouldn't you take in like? More information. Uh, I do a certain thing, and that's just my way of doing it. Clearly, what you play earlier, your bass drum technique is very, very effective. So, a couple of things we could ask about that. Please, yeah. I just thought that. Well, you, we I know which bit you're going to ask about. Brown Eyed Girl, but you we'll, know which we're going <laughs> to ask yeah, about. Pete, all right, let's do that. So, people always say, "Grade three. Uh, this is one of the bands that I got you going back to what you were saying earlier that I didn't know existed, but I now Again, one of my favorite bands. A couple of guys, young, Alabama, young Alabama absolutely. Shakes, yeah, at, the, yeah. at, the, at, the, at the planning meeting for the syllabus, yeah. you know, James Sedge and I are looking at it saying, Who the hell are these guys? Yeah, and they're brilliant! <laughs> yeah. Spot the 40 year old guy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, who's this Weezer. That's uh, right. Weezer, I've heard of you. So, so Alabama Shakes and yeah. uh, Modest Mouse. Modest and, Mouse. Uh, who we were just talking about, Grade Seven, uh, Grizzly Bear. So Grizzly three, Bear. they're now three of my favourite bands. I'd never heard of them uh -huh. before, which is my fault, not theirs. Be before the um, Zillips came out, and Weezer, who I forgot were my favourite band when I was like fourteen years old. I now, because of that Islands in the Sun song, and I thought it was Kenny Rogers when I first opened it. But it's, <laughs> it's now I know. nothing wrong with that. No, which I was delighted either way. And then, but now I'm banging to Weezer again. Anyway, Very so good. Alabama Shakes, you yeah. know the one, yeah. Uh, don't want to fight. It's nasty. I mean, it's a great, great tune, isn't it? It's a great tune. Absolutely great tune. And there's all sorts of other things, you know. And I love it, if it, it, it because of course it would just uh, what are drums without the rest of it? It's about making music Big and time, enjoying yeah. music, you know. Yeah. We choose that's our instrument that we are music students. We're going through that trying nice. to make music together. We're trying, know? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, there's that bit, right? When it goes, sorry, yeah, you're everyone knows the bit. It goes boom, yeah. The bomb. That, that's the one, yeah. And everyone goes, oh, I'm struggling with that. Ooh. Well, I tell you what, oh, you know, that. So if you well, I've, I've, got a, I've, got, I've got a couple of things that I would, I would say about that. Firstly, you know, it, should, this, we, sorry, should, we, should we just move, maybe just to see the bass drum? Should we just yeah. shove these out of the way a bit? Is that is, are they connected? Uh, they are, it's cool, I might, don't worry. Try. Right. So what we'll do is we'll just whistle them here. Oh, okay, right. right. Then that is this full time separate? That's cool, yeah, it is. I'll, right. just, I'll just let you move everything like that. That's cool. Right. I just want to see that. That footwork happening is Actually, cool? yeah, I might perfect. just put the pair of earphones yeah, on. Look after your ears, everybody. That's a good, uh, good you know, bit of advice. You've only um, got one pair. Um, no offence. 
Yes. Cool, man. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, I think, yeah, boom, yeah. gap. This is one of the hardest bits about uh, of grade three, actually. It, yeah. If not, arguably, the hardest. It's, the, it's where the money's won and lost, isn't it, with that merit I think distinction? So. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. you know, and, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a single episode in the piece, but it's also, you know, vital yeah. for, the, for the flow. Yes, yeah, right. Um, so, and I think, really, if we're playing... So in, the, in context, I think it's... Um, uh, three, go on. Yeah, nice, mate. Feel. Great. Um, so my, so, my explanation is often, well, you, you'd have obviously seen it. Yeah, so here are, are two, sort of here, like, here are two ways of basically approaching yeah, this. Mike's got one, I've got one, yeah. other people will have others. Yeah, man. If it sounds good, it's all yeah, right. If it, yeah, if it sounds good, you're doing it right. Yeah, so... Yeah. Do you want to explain your method? Well, uh, yeah. Or have I mean, you done that? I guess, I guess I've um, done that several times. But yeah, long story short, I mean, a simple heel up type of method. Uh, I was inspired by, shout out to Francis, I'm probably going to get his second name wrong, Serio, Serio. Serio from Drum Tech way back, like 2000. What, uh, 2002, he uh, showed me this technique. Uh, probably, I'm probably even misremembering it, but the basic idea was, I don't see my foot here, where, um, when you're playing a single note on a bass drum, uh, assuming you want a nice solid, uh, Hit thump for you know pop rock R and B as opposed to a, a jazzy sort of lighter note. Assuming you want bomb, you know that one that the bloke at the back of the room can feel. Uh, taking off like a little hop from the ball of your foot and basically the whole of your foot landing back down again. Yeah. And then as I've sort of gone through in other videos, to play multiple a multiple line of strokes, you know two notes, three notes, four notes. It's that same movement again. So taking get in position here. I'll do it like this. So you've taken off from the ball of your foot and then landing for two notes, landing back on the ball of your foot, taking off again, and then the whole of your foot coming to rest. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll, I'll link in the description below this to the, the vi various videos where I sort of talk through that. But a nice simple heel up, sort of bouncing on the ball of the foot technique. And that's something that's worked for me. Obviously I've spent most of my time doing it. But I think a really important point is, this is where it's so great to have other perspective, is like that, obviously that isn't the only way of doing it. That's just my way that I've got well, into. I would just talk about one way that works yeah. for me. And again, great. it's different. Yeah, it's, do, it's, yeah. it's not the same as yours. And it's just like, it's some way I do it. But there's, um, there's a couple of things I'll say about this technique and actually about it, the particular position of this this technique within the tune. Cool. Um, yeah. So, um, and I'll talk about that first. Yeah. Because of course, when we, if we learn that idea, sorry, I'm going to play a good tune. If we play something like. Well, boom, it's still the same distance between yeah. each note. Yeah. But it's at a particular point in the bar where we're used to hearing it. Yeah. Boom, da, go boom, boom, ba. Nice. One in and a two in and a three and four. Mm -hmm. So we're playing into beat three. Like it, yeah. As and opposed two. to one and two and three and four and yeah. one. Yeah. So really, in this particular piece, it's in a funny part yeah, of the bar. Yeah, it's an unexpected it's, it, it's, place, it, yeah. It's not a common place where you'd expect to play go boom. Yeah. So that, I think, is very much part of the challenge. Okay, We're nice. not used yeah. to hearing it yeah. in that particular position. So okay. don't be... Um, put off by the fact that you might be finding it more difficult naturally because it is a, it's, it's conceptually a hard one to hear. Nice. Firstly. I like that. Yeah. You're um, doing like heel down. Well, let me just sort of, then let me break it down. Like let, let me yeah. break it down a bit. Firstly, yeah. you know, if I'm, if I'm getting the first stroke, I, I like to kind of think, you know, we think about how the way we hold the stick. Yeah. I kind of like to think of it in the same way as that I'm kind of taking hold of the, this is some might sound odd but I'm kind of taking hold of this heel of, of, of the of the of the of the plate of the pedal a okay. little bit yeah. so imagine if you're sort of sitting at home and you know on the sofa or something and you can and, and you 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 want to pick something up on the floor but you can't be bothered to bend <laughs> okay yeah. so I kind of crunch up my toe in inside my shoe okay. and I kind of imagine I was picking something up and you, so you've got this idea that you're sort of you know you're kind of seizing Okay. The bass drum. Wow. Okay. Play. This is. Really then I've got. Okay. I've got kind of you know, obviously I can't pick that up, but I'm. I'm. It's almost like I'm sort of trying to sort of take. It's, it's not just a flat foot going down. Okay. And then with it, so that's how I'm sort of seizing the plate for the first thing, and that's how I I, I would I, I try and get a bit more bang for the buck on the first stroke. But your heel is down the entire time through the first. Let's have a look. first. Down. I'm playing again too. Yeah, come on. And then in the second stroke, ba boom. 
Yeah. Ba boom. And if we think about the articulation, yeah. boom, ba, ba boom, boom, ba. Yeah. The second note is kind of where we're moving towards. Yeah. Ba boom. Yes. As opposed yeah. to ba boom. Yeah, like it. Yeah. yeah. Boom ba. Yeah. Ga boom ba. So I'm pushing through with the second stroke. Yeah. It's just the way I do it. This is yeah. not the only way. This no, is other way. Yeah. Then I'll bring the heel up for the second. Like it. That's you know. Really that, cool. But really, this is just one perspective. And. I mean, for me, like the big thing is whatever method you choose. So let's face it, like world class drummers play, some of them play everything. Well, a lot of guys will play heel some, up and just do it that way, won't they? Some people are swivel, some people do heel toe. You will have that in that, in that you know, a lot yeah. of people, their heel won't go anywhere near it. Yeah, right. And you know. for me, it, it sort of goes back a bit to the time on your feet sort of concept. Whatever method you choose, as long as it's something effective, like, again, that's a great starting point, but then I think this is where some people. Get a look if it, it, it's time, isn't it? Like, mm. it takes time. There's a reason there's a number three on the yeah. front of this book. And uh, my experience with rock and pop grades is, especially the motivated people who just take up drums, they often arrive at grade three in yeah. actually a very short amount of time, like a few months yeah, sometimes, yeah. or even sometimes even a few weeks. So, physical skills are something that just like just take time, don't they? There's just no very much way so. around that. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that. I think a lot of smart, motivated people who get they work with the lovely introducing books, they get their head around the theory stuff, they get their head around counting and they can learn the music, they can understand everything. They often seem a bit like, almost a bit surprised that there's something there that doesn't happen in that shorter time scale. So I think it's just always a really important thing, whatever technique mm. you, you have, a really important thing to, to, to keep hold of is these things just take time to ferment. Like you've got a of course they do. Lovely smooth technique. But, but then you know, but, um, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a, in a few weeks, did it? Like but these, but, but you can. Yeah, but also then, depend if you're uh, if if you're someone who's who's played for a long time. Yeah. You know, doesn't necessarily read or hasn't been sort of um, particularly uh, experienced in terms of reading. Yeah. You can you can still kind of drop in on this syllabus if those kind oh, of bits of work yeah, yeah, have been yeah, done. Yeah. You know, and the way that, that, that Trinity sort of put this together, it, 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 it's 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 a syllabus that is a sort of open access nice. to people from any particular background. Big time, yeah. You know, you don't have to have a teacher. It does help to have a, a good teacher, obviously. That you know, where you, but but it, it's not a prerequisite. You know, people say, Do you know, a good drum teacher. I say, no, but I know Mike Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> you can land in. You know, on this syllabus, according to your own experience, nice. you know, uh, yeah, and, like and it. so it, it, it's open for that. Yeah. And actually, this is where your videos come. Up. Obviously, I mean, you know, this is why we were watching it in the first place. You know, because th these things will practical demonstration of these pieces is, is enormously helpful to get mm. someone else's perspective on it. Big you time, know, there'll yeah. be something you can hear. And think, oh, actually, but how does that work? And yeah. you know, how's he doing that? I just if, if I'm trying to remember a song days. and there's anything, anything other than like it's uh, very straightforward. The first thing I'll do is I'll just go to YouTube and I'll type in the artist. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll the word live. Or live performance, whatever, and I'll just always try and see the thing. Being but that's played. it, you know. If you're, so this is kind of for the people looking at doing the Trinity material. Yeah. Look at the original song, find a live Man, version, yeah, listen yeah. to it. You know, have yeah. them on a little playlist, stick it on in the in the car or whatever, and you're really driving somewhere, or just having it if you're on the train or on the bus or yeah. anything like that. Just this get to know something. If you, yes. you know, the worst thing you can do is actually open the book and look at the first bar and think. What am, how do I what play? What is this? It? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, the last um, uh, West End show I did. Not that oh, yeah. we need to go on about that, but I mean, I, I did a little, a tiny bit of Wicked. Nice, yeah. Um, That's a great show. It is hard work. Well, uh, but I only mention it because when I did it, I, I, I went and watched it a few times first. Yeah. I watched nice. a great drummer called Pete May, who's very sadly no longer with us. Um, played it, and I watched Pete play it a few times, and then I got the score, and for the first. Sort of four weeks of learning it, oh, yeah. I didn't pick the sticks up. Really? I just listened to the recording nice. and I just yeah. tried to learn the recording and then yeah. I had the score. Yeah. And I thought, because it's it, the, the, the the time signatures are moving all the time, the tempo yeah. is yeah, yeah. loads of rubato, push pull all yeah. the time. And I thought, I, you know, before I get anywhere near that and trying to deal with anything, I need to know that. To first. Get it in your system. I need to know that yeah. inside out before like I yeah. even sort of put the stick down. Yeah. Once, even before I even pick a stick up. Yeah. So that's the idea, you know. It, if, if we can actually get right inside these tunes. Yeah. So by that, I mean both the demo tunes uh, that you'll find on Soundwise nice. and the originals. Yeah. You know, and as the as the syllabus 
goes on, yep. you know, uh, and, and the actual pieces get longer. So at grade yep. six or where, wherever, yep. you know, and you're playing Pressure and Time or whatever, yep. or, Thanks you know, up to yeah. grade eight, playing War Pigs. Or so. Actually, yeah. War Pigs is slightly different because we, we edited, edited that down a tiny bit. But, yes, um, I've got a question about that. I'll, I'll good. But, um, but, you know, they're, they're much more like the full length versions. So yes. grade one, we can't play the whole of Billie Jean or right. whatever. So yes. there'll be certain things that we need to do. Yeah. But um, if you're inside those tunes and you know how, they, uh, how they're supposed to go, yeah. You've got every chance of being able to You've do, sort of do it, I think so. as opposed to I'm trying to play this unrelated bit of ink on a page. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? It's a night and day difference, isn't it? If you've got a song in your system, it's in your heart already. Of course. When you sit down and look at it on a piece of paper, you're just like, okay, that, yeah. You, you can do so much practice gaps. without yeah. even being near a drum kit. You don't yeah. even have to be near it. Just yeah. when you're around, just taking this stuff, get it in your head, you know. Uh, so the question Warpigs is, a, it's, a really, it's not a specifically Warpigs, it's just a really goofy question, but and, and you've basically given the answer already, and the answer is, Fairly simple, but I just get asked it all the time, and that is like why you know the cool. arrangements are, are rock apart are different from the original. Yeah, like, people always ask me why isn't why isn't why am I playing this version of um, you know with this Weezer song? Why am I playing? Yeah, yeah, one yeah. Bites the dust. That's well, for example, another one bites the dust is, yeah. is, is a good example because the yeah. original song I don't know how long it is, but it's not one minute. Yeah, which right. is what the grade one version yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, but grade one is a short exam. Yeah. you know the exam takes about just under a quarter of an hour, I think, to sort of do under normal circumstances. Yep. And if you're doing a digital uh, assessment, you play the three pieces, again, it's a, sh it's a short thing. That's the time allotted for a, yep. for a grade one exam. Perfect, so really, what we get, or what Trinity are looking for, is a sort of snapshot of your playing at that level. So, nice. we, we, so we sample yep. the important material. Yep. Essentially, if we're looking at um, Another One Bites the Dust, yep. it's that super solid straight eight feel, yep. you know, with some, with some simple fills which show your understanding of note values to yep. that level. Nice. Uh, and uh, by that point, We've seen what we need to see. Lovely, yeah, that's a great. You answer. know, we've yeah. seen that you know that the timekeeping is 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 where it is, is how it is. That your sound is what it is, and everything that is sort of examinable. Yeah, you know, ha has that been, makes perfect has been sense. Seen. And as it goes along, um, and like grade four, grade five, the question I get asked the most is, "Here comes the sun." It's a beautiful arrangement. It's lo loads of fun to play. But every other person says, "What? Where are the, where are the, where are Ringo's tom tom feels?" And like, yeah, what like what? Why? What's the thinking behind that? Is it just it just makes sense because of the grade level? Is that the thing like the physical sort of techniques involved like, for that particular level? I think in particularly what we're talking about here comes the sun is 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 the concept of moving time. Right. You know, and that the rolling time signatures. That's yep. really the, the the challenge, I think, in that okay. particular one. So yep. we have a we have the sound, yep. bright and light. We're talking about it. Yep. You know, there are fills in there, but it's not necessarily a transcription. It's not a no. It's, it's not a takedown. There's, okay. there's a couple of small fill ideas, but it's not a bit. It's I'm, not a big fill. Some some here it comes. He, he's got the sort of flowing around the toms. And what I normally say is, but well, Ringo, by his own admission, had that amazing like emotional. Style, didn't he? Well, so, for me, like I would say, it isn't really something you'd necessarily like transcribe out and get someone well, else. Well, look, to I mean, play. you know, look, we, again, this is, uh, I, I, I think that the challenge that is appropriate for that yeah, level, yeah, cool, is is, uh, is is summed up by moving between seven eight. Five yeah, eight, yeah, six nice. eight. Yeah. It's a conceptual challenge. Actually, when you've got it, it flows very nicely. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, I think the idea was that it was felt if we are sort of loading on a lot of orchestration around yeah, that, moving totally, around yeah. the drums, okay. yeah. maybe that's a bit much. Yeah, and the thing is, there's nothing stopping you doing. Is I always the answer I always give is well, once you've learnt this version, if you, I mean, not for your exam, obviously, but then there's nothing stopping you then. Once you've got, like you say, got those different timings like in your system, there's nothing stopping you replicating that and having fun. I mean, it's, it's you know, these mind. pieces. Are hopefully, the, the, the way that you work with these pieces, you know, it doesn't necessarily end. Completely when you do your exam, or, yeah. or, or you know the exam room, exam room is just one tiny snapshot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Of, yeah, of yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you've got you've you've got a year with these, or a term, or however yeah. long it yeah, is. Long, yeah. to, you know, spend time with them, enjoy them. Yeah. You know, Brilliant. and then get get everything you can get out of them. Yeah. You yeah, know, big time, squeeze yeah. it for everything that it's worth, Man, and I'm then all... then you take the step and you're ready for the next thing. I'm you know? always saying that any moment, I just think any moment that you see that you like, something little, some little moment, some little sticking, some little drum feel like. It's not just like performing it, like take that out, like, mm. you know, noodle on it, like have a half an hour, like playing around with that, that feel, that sticking, change it, obviously not for exam performance, but outside of that, like change it, do your own thing with it, see what you can use it as a starting point to sort of mm. make, you know. That's half the point, I feel like half the, the point of doing the rock and pop thing in particular is you just take, like, when I, this is a bit of a cliche, when you think of all the most interesting people like in life, 
this might sound a bit weird, but the, the reason, in my opinion, they're interesting is because they're interested in stuff. Mm. They've taken in loads of good information, right? So, you know, like we're having a conversation, if somebody's interesting, it's because they're, they're interested in stuff. They might travel, they might read books, they might watch, learn to cook, watch different TV programs, they might like French films, whatever the thing is, you know what I mean? They, they've taken in great information. So when it's time to be creative or to converse, they've got ammunition. I just think the, 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 the rock and pop thing is absolutely massive for that because you're exposing your musical brain to these great moments. Yeah, great, get, you know, play the pieces, uh, do your exam, of course, that's a great thing as well. But then just as a starting point for creativity, because people ask me all the time, oh, I can't think of any drum fuss. How do I be creative? And my number one answer is, Take information in. You know that's what I'm right. Like just take an interest. In well, it's just stuff. listen to music. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, that's the right, thing, exactly, isn't it? You know, yeah. find find yeah. different things, yeah. things that you like. It's very difficult. Not that that isn't true, though. I tell yeah. you what, it's harder than it was. I mean, when I was yeah. a kid, you know, I'm yeah. not. I'm, <laughs> You know, I'm not young, but I'm not that. You know, I'm not a mid, I'm not the a hundred. I'm twenty six. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you know, there were very. Uh, uh, your music taste was very much part of your identity. Massively. You know, and uh, you, we opted yeah. in because, of course, we were all buying music at the time. We all yeah. had record collections and yeah. tape collections yeah. and all the rest of the CD yeah. libraries and all the rest of that. Yeah. You know, so everyone had a very much more, you know, the idea of consuming music was much more an active decision. Yeah. You know, it wasn't something that was passively on, uh, you, you know, either on kind of an in-game radio, like if you're playing FIFA or something and you've got <laughs> yeah, radio yeah, coming yeah. out at you or whatever yeah. like or, or on adverts or on whatever, yeah. you know, you actively went in yeah. and sort of support it and, and took part in the music industry yeah. business that way. Yeah. And so doing that, you learn all those tunes yeah. and you learn all those fills. Certainly yeah. the music of that time, of yeah. course, because everyone, yeah. everything had drunk it on it. So it's harder these days. It really is. Yeah. My suggestion is just sort of find something you like and explore, just go further with it. It's all there. It's all available. Yeah. But you've actually, again, got to make your own kind of active choice. Cool. And the rock, what the rock and pop thing does, which I just think is really cool and I've seen happen to people, is at least it gives you a nice program of of stuff like a really nice like once through kind of popular music well and i hope you know it's I, mean? a, I hope it's a way in i hope I people think sort is, of just yeah. dis discover things you know it has been for me man discovering new music for the bands that i mentioned and it, i've heard it a lot of people getting into these uh books and then getting into a band like you gotta remember like some people start drums and they haven't heard of queen or they haven't heard of mm. maybe they heard of the beatles maybe those people haven't but you know like certain artists uh i think it's a brilliant way i think this needs to be said sort of more it's a brilliant way of exposing our brains musical brains to to, to the classics, the mm. classic material that you can then take. Well, in, and it should be fun. I think that's the thing. Mm. You know, I think if we say anything, if, if we are wrapping it up, we probably know, should. We? I yeah. think it's a, I think the key is just enjoy it. Enjoy your drumming. That's all it's there for. That's it should, it cool, should be a pleasure. Yeah. Well, I just can't. I mean, I know I keep saying I can't recommend these books enough. These are the books that get you in uh, and sort of support you through. Well, the right to the beginning to grade three, grade four. I hope so, and I hope that you know level, they, they should be enjoyable and not a chore. And it's a fun yes. way to, to to sort of take this information on, Big and all the in. concepts in there will just stay with you. They're as true at grade eight and beyond, you know, throughout your drumming life as they are when you learn them for the first time. Big and time. you know, they happen to be in that book. I didn't make them up, you know, but they are. Yeah. They're essential truths about making music and play, you know, Big and time. in particular, making music at the drum kit. I love it. And this is, yeah, like I said, it's a great way in. It takes you up to the grade three, grade four level. But the context is great. So you're learning the stuff, you're learning what a crotchet, what a quaver, what a semi-quaver is, all the all the questions that people are, ask when it's like, oh, I'm trying to learn this piece, I'm trying to learn that piece. The answers are in here, but there's that context as well. So to play along some rocking, man. Uh, I did one, well, uh, watch here for some more. If you're going to well, do it, I'll, I'll tell you about it. I did Wayfaring Stranger, which is great. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, next time we do that shuffle one from the end. Cool. That's great. And then... So these are like, yeah, the, we'll get you to that point and accompany through. And yeah, I'm a big fan of the rock and pop. I'm a big fan of the regular Trinity grade as well. But Me the too. rock and pop since 2012 has just been something, uh, something amazing. And it's just got, I've just seen it hundreds or thousands, well, hundreds of people I, just, I guess I've worked with who've come through the rock and pop thing. And yeah. it's got them into playing. It's got them excited about playing. It's kept them motivated. I think so. I think, yeah. So, well, I hope so. I, th I hope yeah. people are enjoying it, you know, and I hope that it's sort of just, just fired up people's enthusiasm. It's something to play. It's something to get on the drums and do in a structured way, isn't Big it? Big time. When I learnt the drums, it was amazing with dear old Roger O'Dell, who... Was, yes, Roger. He was, he was a legend, and it is a legend. Um, but the, the great thing was cool, totally cool, but there was no music to play, so there was no backing track. It wasn't songs you'd recognise. Um, and now it's just, again, it's, an, it's a night and day different, difference. I think it's really, really cool. And music people recognise and get excited about playing. So, uh, yeah, thanks to Trinity. I think it's a winner. So check them out. I, I really keep saying it, but it's true. I can't recommend these books enough. Introducing Drum Kit, part one, part two, which have been out for a while. Part three is a winner. 
uh, people ask, ask funny questions sometimes, like, what order should I do them in? One, two, three. Why well, <laughs> not? Yeah, that's the way to do it. And uh, same with the greys, man. I feel, personally, I'm a huge fan of doing them in order, uh, unless you've got to make There's something to get from all of them, isn't yeah, there there is, yeah. there is. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. You know, just go through, we don't have to sit every exam, but just go, you know, go through, enjoy, learn more. Yeah, you know. man. I love it. George, thanks so much. I really no, it's been a pleasure. I've loved it. Hopefully there's pleasure. somebody still watching. We're at 50. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I haven't gone to sleep yet. Well, maybe we have. I appreciate it so much. All I'll right. shake your hand, but we can't do these. Good. Both. Thanks, Both. man. Thanks a million. Introducing Drum Kit from Trinity and, of course, the Rock and Pop Grades. Uh, check him out. Any questions, give us a shout. Thanks, See you George. again. Take Thanks care. Thanks so much, man. Bye-bye.